Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So last time we installed our burp certificate so that we can proxy traffic. This will allow us in order to test the APIs behind the mobile application. And then somebody asked me, well, what do I do next? Well, after you test all the application traffic and do your, you know, web application hacking on the APIs and all of that, you also need to check the stuff that's on the device. So last time we installed some random vulnerable whatever. I think the application was uh, this EVABS v4. Now I really don't know what that is, but in order to take a look, what we would do is do our ADB shell. And once we hop in here, usually these applications are installed in data data. So So if you hop in the data data directory and do an ls, you'll see the name of all of the programs that are installed on the application. And right here we have this evabs, so we can just ls into that directory. So one thing you'll notice really quick is that, you know, when you're testing this, you need to have some Linux skills. So if you don't actually have some Linux skills, go take a quick Linux tutorial online on just how to like go around directories open things up, etc. Nothing too complicated, but you need that for the mobile hacking. So we'll hop in there. And now that we're in here, we're just gonna ls and we see a couple files. We have a cache file, a code cache file, a lib file, and shared preferences. So a lib file is probably just the libraries that come with whatever they were coding with. Probably don't care about those. We can check it really quick though. Um, shared preferences is probably good though, because the things that we're looking for when we're actually, you know, looking at what's in the application folders, we're looking for stuff like, you know, connections to cloud things using credentials that were stupidly put into the program um, that might give us like AWS access or Azure access, or maybe uh, connection strings or URLs to other data stores that we can browse to directly and get stuff. Um, usernames, passwords, encryption keys, pretty much anything that really shouldn't be stored in here. Sensitive data or data that we can leverage in some way, right? So a shared preferences might be a place for that. I don't know what's in here. I actually haven't looked at this application, but that would be the first place I would go. So let's check out that. Um, we have a details.xml, so we can cat that out. And looks like there's some kind of password in there. So this is a vulnerable application. So it's gonna have blatantly stupid things in it. So it looks like we have a shared prefs could be compromised. So we would then take that password and see if maybe that works for, you know, um, this test username. And if we use that test username with this UR, uh, password, does that give us something else in the application we shouldn't see? Some kind of administrative access. So that would be one thing we look at. And then let's see, we had a preference.xml, so we do that, cat. So a lot of times the preferences will also have stuff like passwords in them or just other details, connection details, or pulling in data from somewhere, maybe that we can access directly. In here we have uh, is first run false. Um, so really nothing in here right now. So we could hop back a directory. And we have a code cache directory, cache directory, lib directory. I'm guessing the lib is just standard, you know, library stuff that we don't care about. Lib native, yeah, it's just a, you know, dot so library. We really don't care about that. Kind of like when you're reverse engineering x86 binary, right? We don't really care about like string copy or, or some kind of native function. We care about what the developers actually put in here. I don't really wanna mess with this one too much. So let's hop out of here. We'll exit and then we'll take a look at another application. And we have this pivia.apk. Now I saw a bunch of write-ups online for this one. So there was a lot of things wrong with it. I didn't look at the write-ups. I didn't look at the app yet. I just kind of grabbed the APK. I figure we can kind of go through it and go through like a little methodology because we're not trying to solve challenges in here and we're not trying to solve puzzles or exercises. We just kind of want to browse around and see what we would see if this was something that we got hired to actually check. So we can install this with ADB, 
install. And it says success, we installed. So if we go into our application directory here, we'll actually see that that Pivi is installed. So before we actually launch that, let's see what we can see before it launches. Because also, when you're putting in passwords into applications or you're browsing websites and you're doing things on the application, more data will be added into those folders. So I kind of want to see the difference between before and after. And that would be the first thing I would do. So I'd go ADB shell. And we'll go back to that data data directory. So And there it is, this uh, HT bridge Pivia. So we'll say cd com.ht Pivia, and we'll ls in here. And all we have is a cache and a code cache, right? So there's not really anything in here. So let's open up this application. We probably had more data in the last one because we had opened it up while we were actually installing things last time. So it, it added some directories. So we have a username and a password prompt here. Okay, so now we'll ls again. We have a databases, so we can check that out. Um, Pivia, Pivia db.journal, so we can say SQLite, which is installed in here by default. You don't need to do anything if you installed this with our last tutorial. Should be there already, so we'll go SQLite 3 Pivia DB, and we can just do tables, dot tables to list out what's in here. And my B key is sticking today. You gotta love these MacBooks and they're really crappy keyboards, but uh, that's a whole nother issue, right? So um, we have two tables, actually it should be dot tables. Did that actually work without the S? Huh, it does, okay, cool. So anyway, we'll go select star from data and we'll see what's in there. And it just says, my vulnerable application high-tech bridge. So it looks just like the name of it. And then we'll go select star from Android metadata. I don't really expect much to be in there. Uh, it just says US language. Okay, so I'm going to control C out of there or control Z out of there. There we go. And we can check out the Pivia DB journal. And we'll also want to check these databases again after we play with the application and see if data is stored in there. I don't think there will be. I didn't really see any other tables unless it's creating tables on the fly, but we'll see. Um, so we'll say Let's see what's in here real quick. Tables, uh, it's empty, so nothing in there. We'll control Z out of there. All right, that was the only new thing that go went in there after we you know, launched the application. So let's try to just log into this thing. We'll say um, guest, guest. I usually like to try like test, test, guest, guest, admin, admin. You know, if it's an actual login, sometimes those are defaults. This is a vulnerable application. It probably accepts anything. But anyway, let's check what else is in here. Um, yeah, we did get some new stuff. We got a shared preferences again. So we'll wanna check that. Um, we have a app web view. So it's probably the stuff for the web view in the application. And an app textures, we probably don't care about that. That's probably, you know, different things for the views. Uh, not really anything data wise, but we'll check it anyway. Say shared prefs. We'll ls that, we have WebView Chromium Prefs. Okay, so we'll say cat WebView Chromium Prefs. See, we have last version code used. We don't really care about that too much. Yeah, there's nothing else in here, so let's go back. And we went into databases. Let's see if anything new went into databases. Always good to check that, okay. And we'll check if, let's click around this application a little and let's check this database again, just in case it, you know, it does something new. I don't exactly know what this stuff is. I think these are contrived example things. Yeah, just for the application challenges. 
Um, yeah, because here's all the vulnerabilities in here. So you guys, if you get bored later, go through there, try to figure those out. You might learn some stuff in there. I don't necessarily care about that. Um, all right, so I clicked around a little. Let's see if anything's added to this database. So we'll say SQLite 3. See if any tables were added from that. No, it looks like the same, but we'll check data again anyway. Yeah, it looks like it's just the same exact thing. So nothing really new in there. Um, another thing we should check though, is control Z out of here, um, is the card data storage, right? So a lot of times sensitive data might get written to the SD card uh, for later on. So we should check that too, and that would be in SD card, LS, and we'll go to Android, because that would probably be the Android applications. We have data and OBB, so we'll check data. Yep, and we do have a com.ht bridge, so we'll say, all right, we have files. So this is writing a credentials.dat. I don't know if this is gonna be encrypted, but we'll check it out. So we'll cat guest guest. So that is what we put in the login prompt. So let's go back to login, put something else in there and see what's going on there. So a potentially if we got a hold of somebody's phone or had some kind of exploit on somebody's phone, we were able to you know, grab data from the SD card. Uh, we would be able to get creds for this application if this was actually a banking application or something that could be bad. So let's put something else in here. I'm just gonna change our username. I'll say test this time. So it should be test guest. And let's list that out again. So cat credentials and test guest. So it looks like it's only saving, wait, yep. Yeah. Uh, it's only saving the current one, is that right? Or did I read that wrong? Let me clear this. Yeah, so it's only saving the most recently used credential. It's, re it's writing over it. So that's actually interesting as well. It's not like a log or anything, it's just uh, the current credential. So another thing we can check too, which is always interesting, is we'll check what's being logged. We can kind of check the debugging with logcat, so if you type in logcat, you'll actually get all the messages as you're clicking around the application, right? So we have like failed exception Java, display controller, brightness, etc. So what we wanna do is go back to this login maybe, and you'll see as I'm clicking, it's scrolling because these are just the logs, right? And I just saw a test guest go across the screen. So that's interesting as well. Um, high tech. So there, it's listing HT bridge on a lot of these. Yeah, in the beginning of all of these. So let's copy that. I'll do a control C there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say log cat and I'm gonna do a grep. Um, if you don't do Linux too often, it's, it's just gonna kind of filter things out. We'll do a grep of that control V of HT bridge. That way we're only getting the stuff associated with this application and we'll kind of get rid of the um, system stuff we don't care about, right? So you grep HT bridge, so now we only see HT bridge. I do see a test guess there, so I don't know when it's logging that, but it's probably when we're logging in. So I'm just gonna go like, uh, change this up again so it's different. Admin, we'll say admin. So we can see anything new kind of going through here. Say so sign in. And I see up here, first off, I see an MD5. Okay, that's interesting. MD5, so that's uh, not a good encryption scheme to use. I don't know what exactly that is per se. And we'll just search what this is. See if it's anything standard. Uh, MD5 reverse, reverse to string admin, admin. Okay, cool. Uh, and by the way, if you're doing client stuff, not always the best idea to search these MD5s because you'll be putting stuff into Google, but this is a challenge application, so we don't really care. But yeah, so it looks like it's doing an MD5 of that, 
and save login to external storage. Writable all okay. Get external directory, storage emulated. So that would be our SD card. Um, public. And we're gonna get save logged info external storage admin password admin so that is where if maybe that was d it was encrypted um within the file let's say it saved only the md5 maybe we would still see like say this line in the debugging and we wouldn't even have to kind of you know attack it with hashcat and figure out what that md5 is because maybe they were logging it and sometimes these log messages, you know, the developers put that there while they're developing so they can see what's going on. They forget to remove these things. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you got, you know, usernames and passwords in, in the log cat stuff um, when stuff's going through and you can kind of get an idea how the encryption's working and, and what's there, what's logged as you're going around. And, you know, sometimes developers do things too, like you know, you're logging around the app and it's passing around sensitive data on the logs you know, maybe stuff that's encrypted in the application or pulling like, you know, say a partial credit card or a partial secure, social security number masked on the screen. But maybe in the logs, it's like the full the full numbers. You can start getting sensitive data off that. So that's always something that's, that's good to check. So I think really um, that's probably the main thing I wanted to show with this video was just like, you know, how to check log files and, you know, things to look for, right? We looked in a SQL database. We saw some stuff in preference files. Sometimes you're gonna see config files um, and stuff in the SD card. Um, but that really covered actually a lot of the types of stuff that I would look for on these devices, right? Another thing you'd look for possibly is uh, encryption keys. So if something was encrypted in here, maybe encryption key is stored in a configuration or a preference file, and they're accessing that encryption key when they're decrypting stuff on the app that might be in the databases. So that's something to look for. I was hacking a bank one time and I actually found that. I was like, whoa, this is not good. This is back in the infancy of mobile. So they were doing stupid stuff back then, um, which is why we have jobs doing this stuff, right? Um, so that way they stop doing stupid stuff. So if you want, you know, follow through with what I just did and kind of take a look at how to do that. If you, you know, you're not used to Linux, go to a quick Linux tutorial. It'll help you out a lot with stuff like this. You know, you can also feel free to, you know, play with the challenges in this or download, you know, a bunch of these vulnerable applications and do the exact same thing that we just did in order to browse it the way you would in a real application, right? You would browse the application, see what data is there, use different functionality, see what new data goes there, right? Like if you opened up a SQL file and there was like tables for, you know, login information or credit cards, but they were blank, you would try to browse around that application, add a credit card, log in, change your password, see if stuff data fills in there, if it's encrypted, what data is stored, what data is not, you know, um, what you can leverage from in these directories that you can use to attack other online things that it communicates with. Those are types of things you would look at when you're doing kind of like the forensic side of looking at what's happening in these application directories. This video is a little different. You know, I'm not really planning out this mobile series. I'm just helping out people who ask me like, how, how do you do mobile, right? Because usually I'll come up with a whole series and I'm like, hey, let's roll through this. Let's do something kind of complicated and go through a whole thing. But this, I'm just kind of helping people out. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, you know, subscribe, share it with your friends and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.